All right. So you're, you're working in Power BI. You, you kind of understand this whole data set thing, but there's all sorts of complex data model stuff that you just don't know how these things are supposed to work together. Where do you start? What do you, what do you got to do? Well, I got news for you. I got you. I got you. Wait till you see what I got for you in the Kratos BI data got data set. Woo! Okay, out on the Kratos BI uh, website, we're gonna hit on the uh, menu button. We're gonna head over to the data guide tools. And now this step, this is very important. This me, you talk, you gotta listen, tune it in, turn it, turn down all the other stuff. This is important. First thing first, you need to make sure that you've gone through the data guide, data mark preparation, that you followed the YouTube videos out here at, on, on step one and six. You don't have to go through all of them. Basically, you have to make sure you've got AdventureWorks DW2019 installed. You've got these views of, that are created as part of this data prep uh, guide make sure that those are available and that they're installed locally on your system under local host okay right it should say local host and you should have the adventureworks dw right here okay that's really important to, to have that set up for you all right now once that's involved then you can go in and you can download the next item this is the data god model data set this has got some advanced concepts inside of here to really help take your game to that next level when it comes to modeling information, okay? It's so the second one in right here. You're gonna download this and open this up. Once this opens up, you're gonna you're gonna have access to everything that's inside this model, right? Um, it is, all the tables are, um, are available inside here. Now, something to note when we go in, uh, take a look at the storage mode, okay? This says it's mixed mode. That means uh, this data set is both in memory, uh, i.e. you've it, the data has been imported into it, and, and here's where something is, it, it's important, and it has a direct connection back to a, a database, okay? That's why it's important for you to have that uh, local host AdventureWorks SQL DW installed so that your queries are gonna be able to go back to that source to be able to retrieve that information, okay? The first time you open up this data set, it's even gonna ask you, hey, do you wanna be able, you know, secure, it's gonna give you a security warning saying, you know, do you want to be able to execute queries against the backend system? You say, yes, all good. Um, so that's available out for you, okay? Inside of this, uh, we've got a whole bunch of things that you can go and check out. Uh, specifically, I'm gonna show you a few of the items that are out there, but we're gonna go to uh, edit parameters, okay? Uh, once you go into edit parameters, you're gonna see that I've got uh, that, that server connection has been parameterized, right? So I've got this set up so that it goes to the local host and the database name that I'm connecting it to. All right, this is a best practice when it comes to connecting to your your uh, your your sources uh, inside of Power BI is to use parameters to control that functionality, okay? I've also got parameters for range start and range end. These are uniquely uh, important parameters if you're going to be using incremental refresh, okay? The parameters have to be called range start and range end for the service to do what they need to do for it. So this is this is a, a good practice to just have those inside your model in case you need to use them, all right? Now, some other things, so on a quick tour of this, there's a lot inside here. I'm just gonna go over to the model to discuss everything that we have. As you can see, oh yeah, tons, tons of stuff in here, right? Like a um, whole bunch of things. Uh, this can be a lot. And in fact, often if you're looking at enterprise models, it's not uncommon to see all sorts of tables that are inside your model, all sorts of crazy joins that you have, you know, a whole bunch of that stuff, right? But I've got a few things in here that I wanna point out. So the the first thing that, that, that's useful inside of here, so, so we've got the all tabs, which you, you're gonna start out on, but the OBT, this is the one big table. So if you're accustomed to pulling your data from uh, a table like 500 columns in it with all bunch of like attributes and measures and whatnot, that's called a one big table or OBT. That's available inside this model. So you can see how that model, how that table looks inside the model. So it's just inside of here, but you can also then go ahead and pull in 
uh, like fact internet sales, right? Fact internet sales. I can go ahead and add that in and you can see that, oh, it doesn't have any uh, relationships to it, right? So that's not, you know, not useful. So pull it out, reseller sales, nothing, right? Um, huh. You know, but you could go and add in any, any dimensional tables to see how it relates, uh, you know, inside of your model and then explore out and add in the different fact tables, right? Oh, so this is how we get our relationships. They go through here. So you can see how those things get set up. You can also see a sample star schema that exists inside of this data model, right? So we've got a, a star schema over here. Um, that is your classical star schema. That's part of this model, right? This other tab highlights how the, um, object level and role level security exists inside your model, how it can be defined. You can go and look through this if you ever have questions on how you should get that set up. But there's a whole bunch of things inside of here, inclusive of like, hey, your date dimension, as we saw earlier, like has all sorts of joins on it. How does that work? We also have um, uh, inside of here, we've got the aggregate tables that's defined in and you can see how that gets set up and, and working all sorts of different measures all sorts of different functionalities this is available for you inside of the data god data set so you can see good examples of how these things are supposed to be set up and work inside your model and hopefully i'm following mostly most of the best practices that are out there in fact um yeah, most of them uh so you can just see how you should be setting these things up versus not all right all right I hope you find that this is very useful. Frankly, this data god data set is something that I use nearly every single day. Guarantee I use it every single month. When any new feature gets published inside of Power BI, I pop open this data set. I play with whatever new functionality is, it, you know, it was added in, in into Power BI, and then I test out, see how it works, and. Uh, you know, kind of make some executive decisions. Like, is this something that's ready to go? Is this something I'd use? How would I use it? Run through and think through situations about those usage patterns. And then you're ready when when that opportunity comes up to, to use that new tooling or new feature, you, you have some experience with it, all right? This is a fantastic resource. I hope you find that it's very helpful for you, especially if you're trying to learn some of these more complex topics. This is something that could really help step that game up all right, if you have questions, leave them down below. If you have comments, want more things of this type, let me know. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, do that YouTube thing. Share this with your family, friends, loved ones. Maybe get your dog set up watching this stuff. You know, that type of thing. Any of that stuff. Try to drive up your know, views on the channel. Really appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Peace.